So five years ago, the bank IFC and the Gates Foundation did a study of the outcomes of health in Africa and why Africa was not meeting the Millennium Development Goals. And one of the major findings was that Africa was not going to meet the Millennium Goals because it was not harnessing its full resources and potential. And most of that was lying in the non-state actor side, the private sector. So the message was very clear that if Africa wants to meet the MDGs, they must harness the resources, the potential and the innovation in the private sector. The question was, what were constraining Africa from doing that? Number one was that there was absolutely no dialogue between the public and the private sector in Africa. Number two, that the private sector wanted to grow but was constrained by very old and negative laws, policies and regulations. Number three, the private sector wanted to grow but had difficulty in accessing capital for growth because interest rates in Africa are in the 20s and 30%. And if you want to borrow them to provide care for the poor, you will have to charge them very, very high. And finally, very, very clearly, that despite all this, the private sector was still the one providing more than 60% of health services, employing more than 60% of the human resources, distributing more than 80% of the pharmaceuticals. And in terms of the amount of money that was spent in this sector, the bulk of the money was out of pocket from private pockets and not from the governments and not from the donors. So the conclusion then was that something has to be done about this. And what did the bank do? It created the Health in Africa initiative to go into Africa, start identifying this private sector and bring them together to talk with the public sector so that they start working together to mobilize, to make a difference for the people of Africa. And that is what we've been doing. The mission is to harness private sector participation in Africa to improve both the health outcomes and reduce the out-of-pocket expenditure that impoverishes so many families in Africa when one of them falls sick. I think that for uh, all the external partners, in uh, with that work with Africa. The first question is, what did we do? What did we do well? And what did we not do well? And this is a question that has to be asked of everybody. The governments themselves and the partners, the NGOs and everybody else. And you'll find that all of us fell short of what could be done, especially the speed that was needed. So that is clear. It doesn't matter whether we point fingers or not, but we did do enough. Secondly, in terms of the Health in Africa initiative, it is clear from what I've explained that even in these three countries, Guinea, Sierra Leone and Liberia, particularly these countries, the bulk of the health services are provided by non-state actors, private sector and NGOs. So they're the ones who've been holding the safety net for everybody. And it just goes to confirm the reason why Health in Africa initiative was started. That had there been better dialogue between the public and the private sector, had we supported the private sector to be more engaged, then they could do more. And you had today the African Union telling you that the African private sector has actually responded very, very positively. Yeah. They're the only ones who are left holding the baby even when public clinics were closed, the faith-based NGOs and private clinics were the only ones that were still working. The big question is, 
Do we do enough to prepare them for this kind of epidemic? Oftentimes when there is training on epidemic management and any other response in Africa, you find that the private sector is not included. Usually it is only the public sector. The message you are getting here is that involve them in your planning, train them together in terms of that response so that when it that you challenged, both the public and the private sector can do and can participate. But there is yet another area that when we look at the private sector in health, it is not just the health providers, it is the manufacturers, it is the employers, it is everybody that's there. And now that we need to raise money, real money to do things in a continuous basis and sustainable basis, the private sector again is the one that we must turn to because this is where the investment is going to come from because you need long-term investment in this country. So even as we reinvest, as we move from the emergency into the transition into development, let us this time not make it a one-sided thing. Let us have opportunities for development to both the public sector and the private sector. And this is the message that the Health in Africa initiative is sending. But what people don't realize is that this is actually the bulk of the private sector in health in Africa are local entrepreneurs. They're not external entrepreneurs. They're the nurse midwife who has retired and has her skills to give to her country. They are that doctor who is unemployed because the government cannot employ everybody and takes their own money, family savings, and goes and starts a clinic. They are that pharmacist who cannot be employed by government and goes and opens the pharmacy, brings drugs in, and starts giving that quality care. That is what we are talking about here. It is a small provider, but it is also the big provider. Oftentimes, the external investor usually is a big investor. A lot of them are still thinking that there is no market for the private sector in Africa. So that's it. But you've asked a very important question. Who is the private sector? Our definition of the private sector is everybody who is non-state but is participating directly or indirectly in health-giving activities.